because I think when you're feeling that, that transcendence, when you're in your zone, that's the only way you can shift. You can shift from the fear to hang on. No, I'm okay. Cause even though the pain was still there, there was a light that came in and it's that shift that Zumba gave me. It gave me the, the possibility. It, it put the light in the darkness. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Seek the Joy podcast. Happy Seek the Joy Tuesday. I'm your host, Sydney Weiss, and today I am sharing one of my all-time favorite episodes. We're going all the way back to January 2019 for this one. It's with Josette Kasik. She's an internationally known and renowned Zumba instructor, mom, healer, lover of life, dancer of the soul, incredible human. And I am so excited to share this one with you again, because in today's episode, we really talk about Josette's incredible journey, dancing out of the darkness and into healing through alignment, joy, and Zumba. Josette is incredible because not only did we just have this amazing conversation back in 2019, but then she joined me for our first ever Seek the Joy Summit back in April. So I am so excited for you to hear this. My friend Julie originally introduced me to Josette and I have yet to take one of her Zumba classes in Santa Barbara. And in 2019, I said I was going to do it. And I just, I just haven't. So Josette, please, (laughs) please hold me to this. In 2022, I'm coming up to take one of your classes. But in today's episode, Josette really dives into her incredible story of healing, the diagnosis of advanced and severe rheumatoid arthritis that changed her life and her decision to really turn within for answers and heal herself. We talk about the importance of listening to your inner voice, paying attention to the signs that the universe gives us because we're constantly getting signs from the universe and choosing to live your life from a space of alignment. We dive into the role Zumba has played in her life and in her healing, the magic that's really infused in her classes in Santa Barbara, and how she continues to choose her light and to live this life beyond her wildest dreams. Plus, Josette shares with us her plans for 2019 at the time, and it's really cool to hear what she was envisioning for herself and her future, joy in her life, and so much more. One of the reasons why I do this podcast is because I really want you to be able to live a happier, more joyful, and just ease-filled life. And so that's why I'm so happy to share that today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. The last year and a half, there is no doubt it's been difficult. And that's why I think now more than ever, it's important that we have reliable resources that we can turn to. And that's where BetterHelp comes in. So this is how it works. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. It's easy and free to change counselors if you don't think the person you're matched with is a good fit. And this service is available for people worldwide too. BetterHelp also offers a broad range of expertise in their counselor network, so you'll get timely and thoughtful responses, and you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions too. So as a listener of Seek the Joy podcast, you will get 10% off your first month by going to betterhelp.com slash seek the joy. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash seek the joy. The link will also be included in our show notes. Josette is just such a cool person and I loved connecting with her and I loved having her on Seek the Joy podcast and I can guarantee you This is one episode you're not going to want to miss. So whether you heard it already back in 2019, or it's your first time tuning into this, or you heard Josette speak at our first ever Seek the Joy Summit back in April, you know what I'm talking about when I say she is just full of light and energy and positivity and just totally inspirational. So I can't wait to hear what you think about this one. As always, make sure to join the conversation on our social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. We are at Seek the Joy Podcast everywhere. Share this episode with a friend hit follow or subscribe wherever it is that you're tuning in and without further ado let's dive into this one dancing out of the darkness with alignment joy and zumba with josette kasik hi my name is josette kasik i am a mom a healer a lover of life 
and a dancer of the soul. Mm. And I'm super excited to be here. I'm so excited to talk to you. I love what you just said, a dancer of the soul. I love that because your history is you've been a dancer your whole life, right? From the time you were really young. I was born to be a dancer. I stopped dancing by the time I was 17 professionally. Mm. Um, I didn't really fit the mold. I was at Joffrey, New York, and I, I was really made it to the top levels, but at the very, ultimately, um, when going professional as a ballet dancer, at least back then in the late eighties, there was a, a body type that was preferred and I'm five, three and a half. Mm -hmm. And I've always been that one half has been really important to me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't blame you. (laughs) I get it. And and I'm curvy. So they were taping me up quite a bit to try and hide um, my breasts. And Mm -hmm. it just got to the point where I realized that they were kind of saying, you know, to go further, you, you, your body has to be a little different. That must have been really hard, right? In the moment to hear that at such a young age, like the way you look in the world, who you are, your maybe not necessarily your identity, but maybe to an extent your identity is just not accepted here. I mean, that has that had been really difficult. Yeah, it's funny because it became part of every my whole story and part of my journey was mm-hmm. that pre-programming that I got at 15, 16 that that you have to be a certain to look a certain way or else you're not accepted. Yeah, that was, I didn't know it at the time, but sure, that that actually kind of molded a lot of the choices I made uh, from then. Yeah, and I can imagine that that must have been really difficult. Yeah. And so I would love to kind of jump in to your story and who you are and how you ended up where you are today. And what landed you in Santa Barbara doing Zumba? I mean, where, where is a good place to start to talk about all of that? Well, I suppose the first place to start would be, um, how sick I was. Yeah. I was, um, actually living in, in South Florida and, uh, in 2011 and had been diagnosed with advanced, um, severe rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease that they say is no, there's no known cure. Mm. Um, and the best that they try and do is shut down your immune systems. They have a um, thing called biologics, which like uh, Humira, they, they basically are made to shut down your immune system so that your immune system doesn't eat up your joints, which is wow. what RA does. Yeah. And so I had actually gone to college and lived in Santa Barbara prior. I loved Santa Barbara. But, um, at the time my husband was, um, he's a professional polo player from Argentina. So we were traveling with our young baby Mm. and that was what was going on. But I had not danced for quite some time. And I think that was actually part of the reason why I got sick. So when, when you were diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, Mm -hmm. you said it was kind of sudden and onset. Did you have any symptoms beforehand or just kind of appeared out of nowhere. No, it really did appear out of nowhere. Uh, I woke up at maybe two, three o'clock in the morning and my knees were the size of grapefruits and I was in excruciating pain. My neck hurt, everything hurt. It literally felt like I had just been run over by a Mack truck. Oh my God. uh, And I didn't know what was going on. And and my, my husband rushed me to the hospital. We they did a bunch of tests. They kind of couldn't figure out what was going on with me. Yeah. And then finally, you know, ER doctors aren't really made for finding and digging deeper. So they, they sent me to a couple specialists after that. And, and it was maybe three specialists later, they realized that it was rheumatoid arthritis. Wow. Did you have any idea as to why this was happening? I found that sometimes with our health, when things pop up and appear, there's another reason for it. And yeah, so I'd be interested to hear from you. Did you have any idea, I guess, why this was happening or in hindsight, maybe why this was all happening? I knew at that moment exactly why it was happening. And it was because I had, I had even spent nights, um, crying, hoping that I didn't get sick because I was under so much stress. Mm. I wasn't happy. I wasn't living the life I was here for. I was my only light was my, my child, my son. Uh, my husband was struggling. We were fighting all the time. It was just a really, really dark time yeah. for me. Um, and I had given up basically everything that I wanted to be, a dancer, a performer. Everything that made me happy was gone, mm-hmm. except my son. So I knew, I knew uh, from maybe a year of stress and 
fighting with my husband and not being happy and not living the life that I wanted to live and blaming everybody else for it except myself. Yeah. Um, it, it, I realize now that it has to come out physically yeah. if it doesn't heal emotionally. Yeah. That stress really manifests in our body. And then there's all that other layers of emotions and difficulties. And what you said too about that you weren't following, I think you said you weren't following the path or the purpose for as to why you're here. Right. And, it, and so when you did start to pivot and follow what it is you feel you're here for, it sounds like it kind of, you started to shift and you returned to dancing. And, and so it's interesting when we're not following that path, when we're not listening to those little pings or those signs that kind of come through, our bodies and our lives are forced to shift. If we're not doing it ourselves, something happens to interrupt us and force us to make that shift. And it sounds like that definitely happened to you. Yeah. And I think uh, you probably know this better than anybody because you've have such an amazing uh, podcast going on and you, you really dig deep and you'll find that most people will end up getting the little taps on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And if you don't listen to the taps on the shoulder, you get a Mac truck. And you that's, do. That's so what it's true. It's like me. a little rock that becomes a boulder that just will run you over if you're exactly. not listening. Yeah. The universe is like, excuse me, I've been trying to reach you. So you're maybe not picking up the work. phone. <laughs> so I'm going to hit you with something massive. Yeah. And it's in those yeah. moments where you're forced to stop and evaluate. And it's so interesting because I've noticed more and more it appears with our health. Those moments mm -hmm. appear with our health because it's the one thing in my experience, at least, that can really stop you and force you to slow down and reevaluate and take that time to heal and then pivot. Exactly. Yeah. So then what was healing like for you? You have this diagnosis. You're yeah. in excruciating pain. It sounds like, you know, your joints and your, your muscles and your whole body was just shutting down. I mean, what was the healing journey like? Well, it was two steps forward, one step back. That was for sure. Yeah. Um, it, it was a lot of pain. I, I was scared um, because everyone, everyone, doctors, family, parents, everyone um, said, you know, just get on the drugs. What are you doing? They're telling mm -hmm. you you're going to be in a wheelchair. You know, what, why are you not? I didn't fill any of the prescriptions. I didn't wow. do it. Mostly because I was still nursing my son. Mm -hmm. And I just said, I don't want him to pay for my inability to figure this out. Mm. So... I, I kind of looked at my husband and I said, okay, we're laying down all the arms right now. I am not fighting with anyone. You have my white flag. Not that I'm giving up, but that I just can't fight. I have to yeah. take care of myself because I definitely had the realization that I was good to no one if I couldn't, if I couldn't walk. Yeah. I, 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 I needed to be, that was, certainly wasn't the person I came here to be. Yeah. So yeah, that it was the, all the epiphanies in the dark moments that were quite healing because that's when I started to realize, wait a minute, I've been, I've been walking and talking something that doesn't, it, that's not authentic. That's not who I want to be that I've been, mm -hmm. I've been living a mediocre, mediocre life. And that's, um, not for any of us. And it certainly yeah. wasn't for me. What a brave choice to decide not to fill or take the prescriptions, especially when they're telling you like, the prognosis here is grim. You may never, you most likely will not walk again. Was there something just in you that knew, like, I could find another way out. I could figure this out myself without the drugs, without the prognosis that they were giving me? Yes, absolutely. And that was where I think it was in those moments that I became open to listening, to, to hearing the inner voice yeah. that is always there. It's ever present. We just have a tendency to block it out because we're so focused on what's happening outside of us that we can't and we don't. And we, we kind of totally like put our la 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 la. Mm -hmm. We can't hear the, yeah. we can't hear the inner voice. And it was in those moments where that inner voice became very loud. And I think the universe has a way of giving you that, you know, there, mm -hmm. there is, there's, there's, there's that window that opens when the door is closed and that mm -hmm. voice that instinct said, you can get out of this. You got to get to Santa Barbara. I had no idea why I was supposed to go to Santa Barbara. My husband mm -hmm. was like, why the heck are we moving to Santa Barbara? It's the most <laughs> expensive place. We, I like, there's only seasonal work for me. What are we going to do? And I kept saying, I don't know. So I sold everything we had. I sold wow. all my heirloom jewelry, all my, my mom's rings that she had given me everything I had, all our China we got wow. for our wedding, everything just so we could 
get the plane ticket, pay first month rent and figure things out. Um, and I said, I don't know, but at this point, the only thing I'm listening to is my, my voice inside. Wow. Talk about having a level of trust, right? That sounds like you may have not had before by right. looking within and listening to that voice. And so as you started to look within and pay attention and did you start to feel like you started to get to know yourself again or, or your identity or who you wanted to be, the more you started to listen and pay attention and sell those heirlooms and book that plane fight, flight and uh, end up in Santa Barbara? Yeah. I mean, it was pretty – it was funny. The more I listened to – to that voice, the inner voice, my soul, whatever you want to call it, yeah, it became almost, um, and I, I hate to say this because everybody wants to say that this was really hard. It became easy. Mm. It became almost like they say going with the flow. It was, it was like, as soon as I made the choice and listened, the doors just opened. Like, the, the condo that I've always wanted to live in in Santa Barbara wow. just came like th they called me and they said, do you want this condo? It's never been available before. And I thought, how would they know what? I wanted to move to Santa Barbara? It was, it was Incredible. so, yeah, it was literally pieces of God just dropping and saying, here you go, here you go, here you go. So I knew something magical was happening. And at the same time, I had already changed my diet. I had gone um, you know, vegan. I was raw vegan the first year and, wow. and I was already starting to feel better. So I knew I was onto something. I love what you said that it became easier because when we mm -hmm. talk about these journeys, when we talk about following our path or our passions, a lot of the conversation is about how difficult it was, how hard it was. You had to go mm -hmm. through the mud to get to the other side. I love what you said though, that it became easier easier. You were no longer fighting against the tide or the current. You were swimming with it. You were, right. for lack of a better word, in alignment, right? With yep. what you were that's supposed to do. And it became easier. And I think that's such an important message to share and show that experience that it doesn't have to be so hard once you start really doing and being, you know, who you are supposed to be. But the journey to figuring that out is, is the process, is sometimes where it's hard. But once you start following it, it becomes easier. It's beautifully said. And alignment is everything. Alignment yeah. is everything. And I think that the hardest thing is the resistance and mm. the and the not trusting and the not believing in yourself and the voice and your soul. That's hard. It is hard. And I love what you just said about resistance because oftentimes we can have we can make that decision for ourselves. We're gonna pay attention to our gut instinct. We're gonna create a foundation or a relationship with our, with our soul and that in our inner voice, but we still have that outside noise, that outside opinions, what the external world thinks. And I think sometimes that's where a little bit of the resistance comes from too, because that path that you know is for you often looks different from what the outside world knows or expects or teaches. And so when you were in the middle of that, I mean, how were you able to block that out and fight against that resistance to keep, you know, moving forward this way? Well, that started when I started to meditate, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Um, mm -hmm. I got a clear download in a meditation and meditation was always really hard for me. I think I could meditate for maybe 10 seconds and then I'm like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I got to get out. I got stuff to do. I get it. It's hard to quiet your mind that way exactly. or, or allow the chatter to go, but just to still sit there. Right. So yeah. that became like a committed practice where I said no. And then, and I started with 30 seconds and I was, you know, maybe a month into it and I could actually do it for 10 minutes. And I, mm -hmm. so it is, it's a muscle that you do, but I got a clear download, um, about blocking, block everybody else out, block mm -hmm. them all out. Uh, it's irrelevant what anybody else thinks right now. You need to do this. And even when I started teaching Zumba, you can imagine here I am with this disease. I could hardly, I couldn't go up and down the stairs. My, my husband had to help me to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I mean, I couldn't walk. Yeah. I was, so I said, yeah. I have to go teach Zumba. And that was it for everybody. They were like, you've totally lost your mind. Like there's, right. no, way. <laughs> there's no way you can't walk, you can't move, but you're right. going to go and stand up on a stage or in front of a group of people and teach Zumba. Yeah. I can exactly. see how they thought that way. <laughs> yeah. No, I was, I was totally nuts. And even when I started, I only had three students and I thought, this is never going to work. The, 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 the city of Santa Barbara, which is where I started um, working for them, they just said, we got to cancel you. You apparently you hardly move. And I thought, oh. oh, I know, but I couldn't tell them why I didn't tell anybody. Right. 
And then I just, again, in a meditation, I, I kind of said, I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing, but it feels a little funny right now. Um, help me out. And there it is. It was like a door opened. I, mm. I started to have instincts to go do some marketing on Facebook and really, you know, go after it. And, and my classes started building. Hmm. How long was the healing process, by the way? Because at this point you're in Santa Barbara and you're teaching and you're still having a hard time, you know, really moving your body. How long was the process between, between really the diagnosis and then when you started to, you know, feel more like you again? One year. It was about one year when I went into complete remission, which is for RA, um, I, I could tell by the mornings because when you wake up in the morning, you just, it's so excruciating. Yeah. It's, um, all, the joints are swollen. So there was the, the morning and I'll never forget it when I woke up and there was nothing, no signs of anything. And I wow. was jumping up and around the house going, Oh my God, it's gone. It's gone. And I wasn't until 2016 that I, there's a, there's a internist, a, a board certified internist in my class. And she mm-hmm. kept saying, I need your blood. I need your blood. I yeah. need to find out what's going on because I've never seen this before. And aren't you curious? And I said, no, I'm not really curious. I, I mean, I know it's not there anymore. And she said, but that's not possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she took my blood and sent it down to UCLA and talked to some people and came up to me and said, well, we're declaring you a medical miracle because wow. it, it's not in remission. It's, it's not there anymore. It's gone. Wow. That's incredible. So yeah. and when you heard that, did it help solidify or give you that sense of validation? Like I trusted myself and now I'm here. It certainly, it did. I mean, at, at that point too, that's what, six, seven years already into it. And yeah. I, 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 five years into it rather. And I kind of already knew, I knew it was gone and I knew that I had done this. I, I was frustrated that I couldn't get other people, uh, meaning other people like the, the arthritis foundation, yeah. um, stuff like that to get them to understand, look, I'm not a medical miracle. I, the, everybody can do this. This is, this is something that should be, I don't know why healing isn't on CNN. Like yeah. it should be everywhere yeah. because it was so painful and people don't need to be in pain and they don't need to be on pearls. Mm. But yeah, no, that's not a, a message most Totally. <laughs> Most will hear. No, it isn't. And listen, I mean, if I think that we're really starting to realize that healing is holistic. So it's mind, mm-hmm. body, and soul. It's not just, you know, take these list of prescriptions. There is a mental and emotional component to it. And so just to kind of recap, I guess, the way you healed yourself was through diet and lifestyle. So it sounds like you went raw vegan. Did you stay mm-hmm. raw vegan or? No. Uh-uh. My husband, I think, yeah, like I said, he's from Argentina. So that's hard in my house. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, uh, he's a good pasta meat eating, uh, gaucho <laughs> and I don't eat meat and I don't eat pasta. What I did is I added fish. I added organic chicken, uh, mm-hmm. from time to time. I, I don't eat raw anymore. I love, you know, cooking my veggies and barbecuing my veggies and grilling. I'm 80% green still. Yeah. um, But I've added the chicken and the fish to keep the proteins for me going. Yeah. And so another component was obviously lifestyle. So reducing Mm -hmm. your stress and you picked up a meditation practice. Was there anything else you did, you know, for anyone that's listening, whether they're suffering from rheumatoid arthritis or whatever it might be that, that really helped you that maybe they could also incorporate, you know, in their life? Well, remembering what what gets me in the zone, remembering what I love, because yeah. I believe that, you know, when we're doing what we love, that's it. That's that's what we're here for. I, yeah. I know that we're meant to be happy. I know that we're meant to feel good. And so for me, dancing is what I love. Mm-hmm. And definitely that crazy idea to start dancing again was the key because yeah. it puts me in my zone and nothing can touch me when I'm there. Mm. And I think that every single one of us has that, that we have something that we love that makes us lose track of time, that we're just, we're in yeah. a zone. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And it's so cool. You know, once you realize what it is and you connect to it and you keep choosing, you know, to go back to it and follow it, it has an, an incredible impact, I think, on your overall well-being, but also, you know, every aspect of your health and just 
following your passions, I think is a total game changer. But for so many, you know, they're, we're still stuck in that process of, you know, figuring out what those things are. Right. And I was too. I mean, that's where I was, that's why I was so unhappy. I was just trying to figure out how to pay the rent, Mm -hmm. you know, as Mm -hmm. a lot of people do, we just kind of go, okay, wait a second. We have to survive. Don't be ridiculous. I, I can't do what I love. I have to survive. I have to get a car and pay rent and live and eat. And, and it was just kind of funny. I realized that, you know, looking back, I'm more successful now than I was in anything I ever did before. And Mm -hmm. it was because I started doing what I loved. Mm, I love that. And I would love to talk to you a little bit about what it is you love, which is dance and Zumba. And Mm -hmm. I want to talk to you a little bit about your classes, because from what I understand from my friend, Julie Gordon and Julie, I'm Mm -hmm. sure you're listening to this. It's more than just dance. It's more than Zumba. You know, there's this kind of spirit and energy of the class. It's powerful. It's filled with your energy and it sounds like it's just electric. So what are, what are your classes like? And what are the, what has the experience been like? Well, it's been cultivating, um, love and energy. And I got to just say, Julie is extraordinary and Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very grateful for her. She's such a beautiful friend. Um, it's, it is energy. That's for sure. Because what I've been able to do through the practice, not only of meditation, but of going in and teaching these classes is to find that, that bliss and that joy that makes me happy and literally try and transmute it to Mm -hmm. everyone that's in the room. And somehow I have been able to be an open channel for that. It, Mm -hmm. I always say it's not really me. I'm just an open channel. I'm, I'm a willing and happy participant. Yeah but I get out of the way. I really get out of the way. When the music goes on, I, I have a mantra that says it's all yours. I don't know who I'm talking to, but (laughs) it just, it's, it's, it's bigger than me. It's more beautiful than I could ever, I could ever create, Mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm happily allowing the flow to flow through me. And it is palpable. I mean, you, you feel it. We, I know there's something magical. And I, even after classes, I'm like, wow, I can't even believe it's so much more than just going in and dancing. Mm -hmm. And it is very difficult to explain if you can't, when you go and experience it. I had a woman come to me after class one time, she was soaking wet and she was crying and she looked at me and she goes, Mm. what the hell just happened to me? And I said, are you okay? She goes, this was the most amazing experience of my life. And I said, Oh, good. I know it's, And I think that's why there's so many people coming. They know that something special happens in there and it is energy. Hmm. Um, And again, I'm just, I'm lucky to be part of it. Yeah. You're the conduit of the magic that kind of flows through that room. And it sounds like the classes themselves, is it safe to say that it's kind of a culmination of who you are and everything that you've been through and you just sort you share that through the movement? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it it was also the perfect storm. I mean, Mm -hmm. I was, I, I have the most, the best background as a technique dancer ever. Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I I did summers at Juilliard. I studied at Joffrey. My mom is from Haiti. So when I grew up, we were doing a merengue all around the house. That's all she ever did. So when, when Zumba came into my life, it was no need for technique dance your heart out, listen to hot, really fast merengues and salsas and all the fun music and let loose. So Mm -hmm. it really was, I I feel so blessed to, to be able to be a Zumba instructor. And, and I've, I've shared this so much with the, with the CEOs of Zumba as well, that I'm, I'm just really, really lucky to have, it, it was almost as if my entire life had built me up for this, but I never knew it. Wow. That's incredible because often, you know, we go through experiences in our lives, we start doing something, but we have no idea where the end point is or even what the middle point is there. We Mm. often show up to when we do things, not knowing that it's preparing us for something else and preparing us for something more. And it sounds like that's definitely the case for you with Zumba. I mean, at at that young age of 17 and being told, you know, your body was not meant for for ballet and and that form of dance. I mean, did you have any idea that you would end up teaching no. and living Zumba? No, no, no. But I tell you what, there's a video of me when I'm three years old and somebody <laughs> asks, what are you going to be when you grow up? And I have my hand on my hip and I say, well, isn't that obvious? I'm going to be dancing and make <laughs> and making people happy. And it was, oh. now that brings me to tears because you I knew. knew, 
I knew. I knew you back knew. then. I had forgotten and I got a good smack in the face reminder, but I'm never going to forget again. Mm, I love that. And there's an inherent joy in Zumba because it's so mm. fun and electric and you're moving your body. And and so what is that like connecting to that joy of Zumba for you? And did it play a strong role in your healing journey too? Yeah. my I, I got dragged to a Zumba class in South Florida by a friend who just couldn't see me miserable anymore. It mm. was actually before the disease hit me. Yeah. Um, and I remember st- literally standing stunned in this class. The class also was very full, maybe 50 people. Um, and it was led by a Brazilian woman. And I thought, oh my God, I was laughing so hard and I was crying because mm-hmm. it was such a release. And it's, it's to me, for me, because I, you don't see me in a gym. I'm not a, a gym rat. I can't, I've had, I've, purchased multiple gym memberships and I've never stepped foot in a gym. Um, um, but, and I'm not a yogi. My brother is really, really into yoga and he does, and he tries to get me to go. And I'm, I said, Oh, it just doesn't jive with me, but Mm -hmm. dance jives. And I think Zumba is a program that reaches everyone because anybody can do it. And it is meant to be joyful, which is quite a stretch from fitness. You know, you go into a gym and you go on a treadmill and you're not thinking of smiling and laughing and high-fiving each other. But with Zumba, that, that is what it's about. And so how many, how many people show up to your classes now on like any given day? On average, we have about 150. Saturdays are about two, between two and 300 on Saturdays. It's, it's a, it's the biggest class I have. That is incredible. Coming from three people to almost yeah. 200, 300 people. I mean, talk about just a confirmation of who you are and what you're doing and trusting yourself in the path that you, you're now on. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. And what I love is I always say to everybody, listen, your jiggle is your money maker here because nobody told it. me that when I was dancing. Yeah. I'm like, you are divine and beautiful and gorgeous. And the more you jiggle, the better you are. So Mm -hmm. people who are, you know, they're a little heavier are going, yes, I got this. And then the girls that are coming in all buff, they're like, oh shoot, I'm all muscle. And I'm like, sorry, (laughs) ladies, it's a little reversed in here. You got to jiggle it. I love that. Yeah. It's kind of my little you know, yeah. getting back at the, at the dance, but no, that's, it is, that's exactly what it is. So it's, it's health from the inside. Um, for sure. Yeah. Well, that first class too, that you went in and you were stunned and it was so impactful for you at mm-hmm. that point, did you start to feel more of a connection to, or yeah, feeling more empowered in who you are in, in your body and in your skin and your own strength or did it, that, did that feeling come a little bit later in your journey? <laughs> I think it came a little bit later. I, I was just starting out. I, I should say that what was fun for me is I invited that first instructor to come to Santa Barbara this mm-hmm. late, this year. And she came and she co-taught a class with me. And I think she was absolutely bewildered because everybody was shaking her hand saying, thank you wow. um, for putting the seed in Josette and, and doing this. And she, it was just such a beautiful friendship, but Mm. yeah, I mean, I definitely fell in love with the Zumba program. I thought of anything that I'm going to stick with and be healthy with and get fit with, it's this because I want to do it every day. And thank goodness that you had it in your life or in your peripheral when you were going through this healing journey with rheumatoid arthritis. And it sounds like, you know, even though you couldn't move at the Mm -hmm. beginning when you were in Santa Barbara, it really helped to fuel, you know, your passion to move again and be who you wanted to be and not settle for, you know, the diagnosis that you were given. Exactly. Yeah, it did. It, 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 because I think when you're feeling that, that transcendence, when you're in your zone, that's the only way you can shift. You can shift from the fear to hang on. No, I'm okay. Cause even though the pain was still there, there was a light that came in and it's that shift that Zumba gave me. It gave me the, the possibility. It, it put the light in the darkness. Mm. And you continue to choose that light and continue to chase it and, and have it be who you are and embody that light within. And, and so what do you do today to continue to live in that space, to choose that light, to connect with yourself, to, you know, harness your inner power and strength and you really embody that? 
Well, I spend a lot of time um, meditating and I don't spend much time doing anything that I don't love and mm-hmm. doesn't make me happy. That's really been my commitment. And I, I've kind of molded my life around that. My husband and I are so tight and so strong now because of what we've been through. And we kind of have made a life of, of just beautiful things. We have horses and we live here in Santa Barbara Mm -hmm. and I'm constantly creating. I created a daily home course. Um, I'm sorry, a course for the daily home this last year. And I'm creating more courses now to help instructors teach from their heart and, and just kind of opening up. So I I also, what's important is we're creators at the core of our being. And I Mm -hmm. think that we have to kind of continue to evolve and create and uh, expand. So yeah. that also keeps me keeps me grounded. Mm, I love that because that process of creating and choosing to create and choosing to expand, it, it keeps life interesting, right? And mm-hmm. allows you to keep choosing or realigning yourself with your passions and your purpose and you know what you're here for. I think sometimes if we remain stagnant within what we're doing, it not only gets boring, but sometimes we lose sight, you know, why, why we're here and what we're doing. And I love that creation and creating programs or creating resources or allowing yourself to be out in nature, connecting with your horses. It sounds like all of that has really helped you to stay grounded and solidify, you know, what it is you you're here for and what you want to do. Right. And I love that you keep using the word alignment because alignment trumps everything. If, mm-hmm. if, if you don't start your day aligned, that's why I always kind of do my meditations in the morning. Yeah. You know, from that point, that's where you take your cues from. And that's where the the expansion comes from. Because if you're taking your cues from alignment, then everything is in the flow and everything becomes easy. And so that's where alignment really is, I have to say, it has to be the most important thing because that's the only way you're going to hear that voice to tell you where your next step is. Yeah. And so for you, it sounds like that process of alignment starts in the morning and it starts Mm -hmm. with meditation. And are there things that you do throughout the day to continue to bring yourself back to that space of alignment too? Yes, absolutely. Um, I have some recorded, I listen to so many masters. I mean, I'm, I go from the late Wayne Dyer to Michael Bernard Beckwith, Abraham Mm -hmm. Hicks. I mean, I have just a list of of audios that I like to listen to, to kind of remind me, you know, stay in alignment, stay in alignment. And I keep them with me so that if I am in the car and I'm feeling a little off, I'll go boom and it'll be able to shift me back. Oh, I love that. That's so important. Having those tools and those mechanisms that allow you to, to shift or to yep, pivot. Right. And it's okay. You know, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I slip off the boat too sometimes. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we all? And we all do. And it's okay. And that's kind of also what's part of the magic of Zumba. And especially in my class is we all get it that we're all in this together and yeah. we're all slipping off and we're all going through our journey and it's a respect for the process and a respect for the journey. I came out the other side literally hoping to be, and I know I am for, for at least my son. And I know a lot of people talk to me just to be a beacon going, look, I did this. You can too, whatever Mm -hmm. is coming your way, um, whatever you're experiencing, whatever you're going through, I'm here to tell you that this isn't the end, that this is just the wake up call. Mm. This isn't the end. This is just wake up call. What an important perspective, right? To have that whatever you're going through right now is temporary and that it is part of the journey and part of the process to get you to where you're supposed to be. This is not the end point. This is, this could be the middle. It could be at the very beginning. We don't know, but it isn't the end point. And that's why I think it's so important to have these conversations and talk to people like you because you really are that beacon. You do really show what's possible when you choose to connect and tune in to who you are and, and listen to that voice and change your life and make decisions based upon where you know you want to go versus where you are in that moment. And I think the more that we share that, and I, I just can't get over what you said, because I think it is so important. And this episode will air at literally the beginning of 2019. And so I think what a valuable mantra maybe even, or perspective, you know, to hold going into the new year or really at any time. Yep. Believe in your magic. It's there. And 
This isn't a bunch of hogwash. This is real. This is totally <laughs> totally. real. Totally. Yeah. What would you say is the biggest lesson that you've learned throughout your journey so far? I mean, it's by no means over, but what what right. would you say has been the biggest lesson or takeaway um, that you've had so far? That we are all magical. That we are all divine sparks, and that. Many of us don't live that, um, but it's there and it's always waiting for us to recognize it and listen and connect and the best word, align with it. Mm -hmm. I think align is the theme of this conversation. Inadvertently, it kind of has become the the, uh, through line throughout the entire conversation. It sounds like what you do and who you are, you've really chosen to embody the joy of the life that you want to live. Are there things that you do, you know, outside of your alignment practices or your classes or whatever it might be that bring you joy or allow you to reconnect to that feeling of joy for yourself? Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I have a 10 year old, so, and Mm. he's, he's magical. He's, he's got lucky with two parents that, you know, um, you know, I, he meditates every morning with me and he's 10. I love that. Um, yeah. And he, he carries his crystals to school and he has, and he, you know, Oh my goodness. He tells people to not to to remember their magical, and so he lives a completely different journey than I did. Mm-hmm. And um, he's awesome. So just being around him is is always playful and pretend. And then um, I have a, a mare, a horse that my husband rescued for me, and she mm-hmm. dances. She's a dressage horse. Aww. And um, when I sing to her, if I'm riding her and I sing, she'll start dancing. Wow. Um, so it's something that, and she was, came from an abusive home. So she and I found each other and she is literally like the love of my life. She's so beautiful. And mm. so I have, yeah. And I live in Santa Barbara again. I mean, I'm, I yeah. still wake up every morning and I go, oh my gosh, this place is so extraordinary. So it's just healing living here, whether it's going to yeah. the mountains or going to the beach or just being in the community. It's just a very healing place. Mm, I love all of that. And it is really healing. And I think connecting to that joy helps to bring about healing too. And so now you're completely in remission. You don't have rheumatoid arthritis anymore, Mm -hmm. but do you find that the healing journey still continues? Maybe even, maybe it's not physical healing at this point, but are there emotional healing or, or mental healing or spiritual healing that you still, um, experience or work through? Because I don't know if the healing is ever over. I don't, yeah, I don't think it ever ends. Yes, absolutely. And, and some, big ones, you know, have come up, um, for me and, and it's beautiful, but now I approach things differently. Mm -hmm. I approach them when the, when the, when the sadness or the tears or the, the bringing up of the past, um, cause they're just triggers and they're still there. Yeah. But now when they come, I take a step back and I can recognize that, Hey, wait a second. Is this a pattern that I've had and, and why, and where did this ever start? And is it really who I want to be? Or am I just reacting from the person I used to be? And yeah. it's all this stuff where I can kind of dissect it so much easier than I did, you know, 20 years ago when totally. I was just like a total reactive bomb. Mm-hmm. Um, I can relate to that. Yeah. yeah so yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just a, a practice, you know, yeah. we're all, again, that's part of respecting the journey as you you'll get there. Everybody gets there. And that still is my practice. I'm by no means a a guru or an expert. I have my moments. Yeah. Don't we all though? And I think that's so important Mm -hmm. to, to share and that the healing journey is never over and we're continuously tasked with moments. I think that challenge us or continue to wake us up or show us either you're in the spot, the space that you're supposed to be in, or you can move closer to it or having that perspective of how to approach triggers or life when it continues to show up, I think it's really important to remember that, that you have that choice in that moment to change how you respond and that how you respond will continue, you know, to really evolve too. Right. Exactly. Beautifully said. So what is ahead for you for 2019? What, what do you have? What's exciting? Cause it is the start of the year. And so, yeah. So what's, what's coming up for you in it 2019? It is exciting. Yeah. Well, my, my son, husband and I have decided we're going to do a world tour. Oh my goodness. I don't know how that's going to happen because my classes are here in Santa Barbara. Yeah. So um, what I'm hoping to accomplish is to start to um, move around a bit and and teach some master classes. I have a lot of requests 
from Zumba instructors around the world to, to come and talk to them and to, to, to help them also grow their business. Um, so back in this year and early this year, the, the CEO of Zumba and the founder of Zumba came out on NPR and did an interview. And, and during their interview that I was the only instructor they discussed and they said, you know, Josette is, you know, she, this is what she's doing. And she's literally the most successful instructor that we've had worldwide. Wow. And I think that, so that hit a, it hit a lot of people and they're like, well, what are you doing? And when I tell them, I'm not doing anything that you think I should be doing. I'm mm-hmm. doing something that means opening my heart, being vulnerable and connecting with people on a level much deeper than just fitness. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people want to hear that because all they're hearing is, you know, you got to do this and you got to do this and you got to do this right, and then, right. and then you'll be successful and it's not working. Yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm trying to kind of get out there and, and speak a little bit more about, you know, conscious business and, and doing what you love, but also on a deeper level, because for me, success came when I went a little deeper, a lot Mm -hmm. deeper. Yeah. When you decided to embrace that level of vulnerability and have that courage and share, you know, your heart and your story that way, I think it's really beautiful just how much things started to open up and, in alignment with the theme of this conversation, you were more aligned. And that is so awesome that you're going to go out and you're going to share that with groups of people outside of Santa Barbara. That is going to be so cool. It is. And my son wants to travel. So we haven't been able to travel because I, I teach six classes a week here and I don't normally take a day off. So I told him, I said, well, this is the year at 10. That's a good year to start traveling and seeing the world. Mm -hmm. And so you teach six classes a week and I didn't ask you this, but how do you maintain that level of energy and stamina teaching, you know, six classes a week? Cause it sounds like they're high intensity and high energy mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. give a lot of yourself and you receive a lot in return. I wish I had the answer for you, but, um, <laughs> it's, it's kind of one of those things. This is, it's really easy for me. I mm-hmm. love it. I yeah. love it. I would do it for free. I am, I, I can't wait to get to mm-hmm. class every day. So I, it's, it's so easy because I love it so much. Oh, it just goes to show when you're living your truth and your purpose and your passion, it just doesn't even feel like work. It is just the thing that you do that lights you up that happens to allow you to live your life the way that you want to. Yeah. I mean, it's like um, musicians. I don't think if you, if you ask a musician or a a singer when they're singing on stage, was it really hard work? You know, they're loving it. They're in their zone and that's why you know, and it's the same with, with what I do. I just Mm. absolutely love it. Oh, so I have to ask you the question I ask everybody that comes on seek the joy podcast, which is what is your biggest dream? Oh gosh, but it shifts all the time. (laughs) And right now I would have to say my biggest dream is to live the life and the legacy that I intended when I came here Mm. and to be the grandest version of who I came here to be and not the, the tiniest ones because mm-hmm. we, we do have a tendency and especially me, I'm overcoming this is, uh, to stand in that power of, of that divine spark that we all are and really dream big and really come out and do what we came here to do. So I know there's a lot for me to do here. And I feel like I'm just starting, even though I'm turning 50 in 2019. No. uh, Yeah. And (laughs) I know I'm like, Oh, what? I'm not ready for that. No, it's just a number. It's just a number. It's just a number. My, my son has a, he's a Harry Potter fan and Mm -hmm. he has carved his own wand and he is magically put me back to 30. So okay. I, I said, I'll take it. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> so we're just going with that. Um, but Aww. yeah, no, just to, to live the life that, that the purposeful life that I came here to live. Yeah. To really embody that, right. And to embody yes. it to the fullest extent and not allow yourself to play small or be small. And listen, it doesn't sound like you've allowed yourself to stay in that small space at all. And especially with this world tour you're going to do in 2019. And Josette, this has just been so much fun having you on Seek the Joy podcast. I feel like we could talk for forever. So we'll have to do this again, but I'm so grateful. Where where can everybody find you? And if they are in Santa Barbara or want to come to Santa Barbara and take one of your classes, where can they find you and, and really learn more? 
Oh, thank you so much, by the way, for having me. It's been of such course, an honor. Yeah. And I, I do, we could talk forever. It's kind of like that girl thing. We could yeah, keep going and totally. going. Um, I'm online, www.josettecacique, T-K-A-C-I-K.com. You can find me uh, some on Twitter uh, Twitter and Instagram. Instagram handle is the same, at Josette Cacique. And in Zumba, you can find me on Zumba.com. Uh, as an instructor in Santa Barbara and that lists all my classes as well. Awesome. Perfect. And I'll include um, everything in the show notes. Um, so it'll be super easy to find you. And Josette, this was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your healing journey and just the gift I think that it really was to you in your life and just the beautiful alignment that you're in now. And, and I'm just so grateful. Thanks again. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Seek the Joy podcast is a production of Seek the Joy Media and created, produced, and hosted by me, Sydney Weiss. You can tune into all of our episodes on your favorite podcast platform. And if you're enjoying the show, hit follow and leave us a five-star rating and review. Make sure to join the community, join the conversation on our social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. We are at Seek the Joy podcast everywhere. And don't forget, you can actually watch today's new episode and all of our episodes on our brand new YouTube channel. Click that link in the show notes to subscribe and tune in. As always, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And I'll see you right back here next week for another Seek the Joy Tuesday. Tuesday.